All right, we did get some rain today, and there was actually one little band of heavier showers this afternoon. That's why Orange and Jaffrey coming in at over a half inch of rain. But, you know, most places picking up less than a tenth of an inch of rain, a little more in the Plymouth and Taunton areas from earlier this morning. So the rain right now is down to one shower kind of passing right over Boston right now. So you see what's happened. It's weakened as it's pushed its way eastward, but this is going to be with us from another half hour to 45 minutes, and then it is gone, and the skies will clear away because this area that's farther out here to the west, now moving to the Berkshires, it's fading now, and I don't think it's going to even survive a trip across the state at all. But with the gray skies, the rain we had today, it was chilly out there. Look at the high temperatures today. Lawrence didn't even get to 50 degrees. In Boston, we hit 53. But remember, on Saturday, it was 20 degrees warmer. We were in the low 70s on Saturday. So a little rain falling over the city right now where it's 51 degrees, picking up a tenth of an inch of rain so far. We might add a couple more clicks to that as we get a little bit of shower activity coming through. And then Skies will clear away overnight tonight. This is what's going to greet you tomorrow morning. It will be chilly. The skies will be clear and we have plenty of sunshine tomorrow, but it will mix with a few clouds every once in a while. But still, I would call it a mostly sunny day. But by five o'clock, you can see we've already cooled off into the 40s and 50s, so not a terribly warm day. In fact, the first part of this week is looking rather chilly. It's the end of the week that's looking warm. So on Wednesday morning, again, plenty of sunshine, temperatures into the 30s. It rebounds into the afternoon with a few fair weather clouds kind of floating through as well. So for tonight, we've got some evening showers out there. Then it turns partly cloudy. And once that breeze starts turning around to the northwest, it's going to be cool and that's going to push the temperatures down. But it's also going to bring in the drier air. So if you're inland, 36. If you're closer to the coast, about 46 degrees. And then tomorrow, a mostly sunny day. It will be cool and it will be breezy and high temperatures like like today, but the difference being tomorrow we get to see some sunshine. Today we didn't get to see much sunshine. It will feel better tomorrow. So high temperatures tomorrow will look like this. Beverly about 56 for a high, and as you look out towards Nashua, about 55 for a high. Worcester County, you're going to start off chilly in the morning, so it'll take a little bit to warm things back up. Rutland and Gardner only about 51. Royalston only about 50, but Worcester should hit about 52 tomorrow. And to the south, no one's going to get to 60, but Taunton and Bridgewater are going to get close with highs into the upper 50s. And over the Cape tomorrow, we'll see temperatures pretty much into the upper 50s. You get a little breeze off the water, we'll keep things a little warmer there. And the temperature trend is such that Wednesday and Thursday morning are our most likely time to see some frost, because after that, Whoa, we warm things back up quickly. You see what happens. High pressure off to the west slowly works its way in. And once it goes far enough to the east, there's warm air out there that's going to be moving in our direction. Here's the way it looks then over the next seven days. Plenty of sunshine. In fact, it's really hard to find any clouds. Scattered frost is possible on Thursday and a chilly start to your Friday. And then we begin the warm up. More on Friday afternoon, a little bit more on Saturday and Sunday, and by a week from today, we could be staring at 70. But upper 60s right now, this time of year, that's above normal, and looks like that's where we're headed by the end of the week. Ed Maria? All right, Mark, thank you for that. Of course, right now at 7, it is this. It is leaf peeping season all over, and changes could be on the way after crowds actually overwhelm the trails in New Hampshire. Photos posted on social media show people trying to squeeze together to get a good view. This is in Franconia Notch, which is obviously one of the most popular spots of foliage in the state. One hiker said it was unsafe as people shoved and then bottlenecked. The state park is looking at ways to control the crowds. There have been another, uh, a number of considerations here at Franconia Notch State Park uh, that have been discussed in recent years, uh, including uh, paid parking fees. Certainly there's been the, the discussion of timed entry. Um, some some of this discussion has actually risen to the level of the legislature. And of course, when you get a lot of people, you get a lot of trash and park officials say a lot of trash was left behind this weekend. A Massachusetts supporter of Make-A-Wish is now a month away from starting a massive expedition. Seven marathons, seven continents in seven days. Bill Murphy of Grafton has supported Make-A-Wish for 20 years, sits on the board for Massachusetts and Rhode Island. He's already made more than a half million dollars over the years. This year he is running the Great World Race. What I just said, seven marathons across the world in a week, Power, calling it nine, running nine, the world for wishes. And, and he is ramping up his final training. And this is just a recovery week. The training is that is really where, where it comes comes in. So it's you got to train on tired legs, you got to train on a tired body, you got to train on tired mind, right? So so that the way that would work is, um, you know, you know, I just did a marathon ye yesterday, but I I ran every day. I love how casually he said, oh, I just did a marathon yesterday. I know, Good right? for him. Amazing. The first marathon is November 15th 
on Antarctica. Tonight at 11, meet the local Make-A-Wish recipient who will be cheering him on the entire way. Duke is running through the sports office looking for his passport and putting the final <laughs> touches on the one-minute drill. That's after the break.